the tale of a spectacular rise and fall in the age of the internet. Belle Gibson was an Australian blogger who wrote about being diagnosed with brain cancer. In August 2013, Belle Gibson launched The Whole Pantry, a book, an app and a website in which she claimed that healthy eating had cured her condition. Her book and app were promoted by Apple and Belle Gibson is estimated to have made more than a million dollars from sales in just two years. But doubts were raised when she failed to deliver a promised $300,000 to charity. Well, Belle Gibson was eventually exposed by the Australian journalists Bo Donnelly and Nick Toscano, who've written a book titled The Woman Who Fooled the World. And Bo joins us now, thank you very much, with the book, along with Pixie Turner, who had a, has 100,000 followers on, on things like Instagram, on your food blog. Yes. And <laughs> you were actually taken in by Belle, weren't I you? I was, I was, yes. We'll have a good chat about this in a moment. But first of all, Bo, um, what caught your suspicion initially? What aroused you to what she was doing? Maybe explain to us what she was doing to begin with and then what made you think not everything's correct here. Sure. Well, Bell Gibson really came out of nowhere in 2013. She created an Instagram account. Uh, she was operating under the moniker of Healing Bell and she claimed to have uh, cured her terminal brain cancer with a healthy diet. And, and by living well and adopting various natural and uh, alternative therapies. Um, from that, the app just exploded. Overnight, she had 10,000 followers. That became 200,000 followers within a few months. She created a, an app which was um, welcomed by Apple. They gave her various awards and flew her back and forth uh, from the America. And uh, then came the book deals on three continents. So she, in the space of 18 months, became very, very popular, very powerful. She earned around half a million dollars in that period of time. And the thing that, the, the reason that Nick Toscano and I started looking into it was because we were tipped off. And we started looking into her um, basically after we heard that she had been faking cancer. And at that time, we couldn't write that story. We had around half a dozen people in Bell Gibson's inner circle telling us that they didn't believe she was sick. But that's a very difficult story for a journalist to write. We don't have access to people's medical records. So we started probing her other claims and these centered around her charitable donations. So you were effectively following the money? That's right. So, and, and from there, we knew that if we, if we started writing stories that proved that she had lied about um, her philanthropic endeavors, that we would smoke other people out and um, you know, the, the house of cards would crumble and that's exactly what happened. We'll get into the investigative si side of it in a moment, but first of all, I just want to ask you then, Pixie, you're one of the many thousands, the tens of thousands of people who listened to Belle Gibson, to watched her videos, to used her app. What was it about her that you felt was so authentic, so convincing. I think she just came across so beautifully on social media. She just had this presence, had this way of writing that really drew you in. And that combined with the beautiful pictures of food that she posted, it was a very simple narrative. It was very easy to absorb and accept. It just sounded really convincing and really authentic. And I think that's kind of what draws people in. And being one of just many people within the wellness industry, once you follow one, you kind of follow all of them. And she was definitely a member of that kind of elite group of wellness bloggers who pretty much everyone followed at the time. But she was so authentic that you just couldn't help but like her at the time. Did her illness or the suggested illness have anything to do with it? Did that make you feel more empathetic? I think so, yeah, definitely. It was definitely something that made her more appealing to listen to because she had this amazing story and that's what made her stand out over a lot of other people. She had this sort of compelling narrative that made people much more drawn to her than they would someone who was simply saying, just eat well and you'll live longer. Now she, I have to say, Bo, I know you were talking about the fact that you don't have her medical records, of course, but she believed that she was ill when she was talking about when she was blogging, when she was using all those pictures, she believed that she was ill. We've got an image from the 60 Minutes interview that she gave uh, where she speaks about it and how she feels that she genuinely felt she was ill. Let's have a listen. I am not lying. He definitely told me that my brain tumour is still present and that I have new and secondary cancers. And how did he assess that? In the same way that Mark did. Similar machines and similar equipment. Um, did you think to go to a doctor? Did you think to go to the hospital? Did you think to get this checked out? Not really, not initially. Um, I was devastated. It just sounds like you chose to believe that you had cancer. Nobody wants to live with the fear of a terminal illness or dying. 
you know, and nobody knows that better than people who actually live with that. And you didn't live with that. That's not what you had. No, it's not. But I lived for years with the fear that I was dying. And that is horrible. So Belle Gibson there speaking to 60 Minutes on Channel 9. And this was an interview that she gave after all uh, the publicity, all the hype after she was essentially, one could say, exposed. So you were talking about the concern that you had when you felt you, you, you started disbelieving her. T tell us through that moment then. So, so once we started looking into her and we started dissecting the claims that she had made, we, basically we pulled everything that was on the public record. So all the transcripts of interviews and, uh, and, and the press that she'd done. And we dissected that, contacted the charities, followed the money, as you said, and we wrote that first story that basically said she'd withheld thousands of monies, money, thousands of dollars of worth of um, mm. fundraising, uh, charity money. Um, and so we expected there would be um, questions raised on social media by her fans and by others within about 24 hours. That happened much sooner in reality. It took about half an hour and there was just this flood really of, um, of commentary and questions directed at her, asking her to prove that she was sick. She then began deleting these, these comments and, and deleting the thousands of posts and photos on Instagram. And really, from, from that point, it just, it, the whole thing began to unravel and she went to ground. And she went to ground. So just uh, t describe to us a little bit more about how she was exposed. Of course, we had a, she was taken to court, wasn't she? That's right. So in the end, she did come out and admit that she had lied about having terminal brain cancer. That clip that you just saw on 60 Minutes where she said she believed that she was sick, um, that was from a, a, a controversial alternative practitioner, that diagnosis. It's important to note that some 18 months to two years before that, she had gone and had a brain scan at one of Melbourne's leading hospitals and it showed that her brain was perfectly normal. So while there is some possible uh, sense of delusion there, Belle Gibson had been told that her brain was perfectly healthy and that she did not have brain cancer. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. Mm. Pixie, as somebody who, I mean, you write yourself, you blog yourself as well about food and you're a trained nutritionist, but when you, when you hear about how somebody uses potentially their condition to try and help other people, but it's not true, how does that make you feel? I mean, it's incredibly frustrating because um, it's so easy to exploit the vulnerability um, of vulnerable people, such as people who have cancer. I mean, it's a terrible situation to be in. And so, of course, you're, at that point, you're going to look for anything you possibly can to help yourself. And that's where these kind of bloggers who use basically the N equals one uh, model, which is I am an anecdote and it applies to everyone. They use that and they spread that on social media and that gives people false hope which is probably the worst kind of thing I think um, someone on social media can do is give someone false hope when there's no reason that they might necessarily get a, get a cure. If, and research shows that people who deviate from um, conventional medicine for cancer are 2.5 times as likely to die within five years, which is really horrible. So these kinds of bloggers are literally causing people a great deal of harm. And as someone who is qualified, who has a proper master's degree in nutrition, it's incredibly frustrating to see people believe bloggers with no qualifications whatsoever over someone such as myself or the many other healthcare professionals on social media who are spreading good messages that are unfortunately quite boring <laughs> in comparison to eat well and you'll cure cancer. So how, how do you drown out then the noise and the, the, the people that perhaps are not saying the truth, that are mm. spreading misinformation with something that is accurate, that has been researched. How do you make your voice heard then? How, why, why should we believe anybody who's blogging about food or, or anything these days? Yeah, it's difficult. And one of the ways that I do it is I use similar tactics to what a lot of wellness bloggers do in the form of putting a lot of pretty food pictures on Instagram. So people may be drawn to it and then I throw some science at them and hope that it sticks. I also use quite uh, loud language and the kind of language that wellness bloggers might use to kind of get people drawn in, in the first place and also I think you could have to call things out when you see them and now there's a lot more healthcare professionals on social media calling out these kind of claims when they see them so that hopefully the message spreads and people become more aware of what they see on social media and become more skeptical that's the most important thing for people to question what they read. That's a good point, isn't it, Bo? Because there's so much information, especially around cancer and what you should be eating, shouldn't be eating. This is very damaging. It's incredibly d damaging and dangerous, especially when you've got someone like Belle Gibson who is targeting the most vulnerable people in, in our society, and that is cancer patients. So in, in the days after we first started writing about Belle Gibson, we were inundated with emails and phone calls from people with cancer, from their families, oncologists, nurses, and 
people were just just appalled at what had happened and this is what we this is really what spurred us on to to turn this into a book and to look deeper because cancer scammers have existed for thousands of years and um, they, they prey on our vulnerability and it's, it's incredibly dangerous. At the point when people are at their weakest, That's right. absolutely. Well, thank you very much. The book is The Woman Who Fooled the World. It is out now. Thank you. And uh, well, thank you very much for bringing your story to us. And Pixie, also thank you so much for talking about your blog and your, uh, where can we find some of your pictures? Um, I'm on plant-based underscore pixie on social media. Again, it's designed to sound like a wellness blogger. <laughs> but, exactly. So it's a, but thank you very much. But there is science behind what you say. So thank Everything, you both, yes. Pixie Boat. Thank you so much. Thank you, and thank you too. Don't forget, we're all on social media if you would like to get in touch. But for the time being, thanks very much for watching Global. Bye-bye.